So I asked ChatGPT, what are the top 10 mistakes a player can make? The worst mistakes a player can make in the mobile game in Raid Shadow Legends. So sure, here are the top 10 worst mistakes a player can make in Raid. And the reason I brought this up is because I came across this Reddit post where a guy named Historical Pitch 324 made a post about it, but we'll get to that. So let's let's get through this. Here are the top 10 worst mistakes. Ignoring starter champions at number one, choosing a weak starter champion, or not investing in a strong one like Kale can significantly hinder your progress. And yeah, you know, this is true. But not not so much so to the extent where it's going to destroy your account and you should just, you know, restart. I think it's a general consensus. If you don't know, pick Kale as your beginning champion. And the reason you want to pick Kale is because he's got a... Oh, uh, yeah, let me get this out of the way. The reason you're going to want to pick Kale is because he's going to be strong for you in uh, clan boss and progressing throughout the campaign. And he's going to be your first camp. There's like a, a lot of reasons, right? He's got poisons on the A1, an AoE nuke with turn meter fill, and then his A3, which attacks four times, placing poisons. Like, he's a strong champion that you're going to want to start out with. But there's nothing wrong with picking any of the other ones except for Gaelic. Don't pick Gaelic. <laughs> you can if you want to. But picking a strong starter champion at the beginning is going to make it so that you can farm your champions better and do more damage in, in a clan boss, right? The second one is wasting resources on bad champions this is true investing valuable resources like skill tomes potions and gems into champions that aren't worth it can set you back and this is actually something that is pretty rampant rampant on uh reddit you go to reddit anywhere you you check if you check like a regular post here half the questions oh by the way there's a new promo code dr224 let's go ahead and do that dr24 what do we get All right, Polarium, thank you for the bruise, XP, a little bit of silver, and the energy. We'll take that. Motherfucker. So, yeah. Um, if you go here, like, half the questions are, is this is this champion worth investing in? Or, I need help. My, my first six-star ascension, or someone, you, you know what I mean? Is this champion good? I need advice. Help, I need a Hydra team. Help, I need an ice go. Like, half the questions are going to be that. And that's a pretty common question that I see. Is a champion worth investing in? I suggest just going to YouTube and, uh, you know, looking for guides or something. And then check the comments. The YouTube comments on those videos are usually going to be very good for you. And I would be actually interested to see your guys' top 10 mistakes or like your top one to, I don't know, three mistakes or like the best or the worst mistakes that you guys have made in Raid. If you could comment that down below, I could probably make a video on it, uh, progressing further into this discussion, potentially helping future newer players. So, skill tomes. I remember... When I first started out in Raid, I was like level, I don't know, 20 to 30 or something. And I really wanted to upgrade Tyrell. Tyrell was an OG back in 2019 and 2020. And I really wanted to max out his uh, his his uh, his kit. I don't think I have him anymore, Tyrell. Because he was, um, he, oh, hey, there he is. I haven't seen you in a while, Tyrell. He was an OG. You, you know, he's got the, he got the moves, basically. And I really wanted to max out his skills. So what did I do? I took my happy ass and um, I upgraded his skills using legendary tomes on an epic champion. Yeah, so that was a big, big waste. Other things, resources, like... Like, I, I would never tell somebody to use gems or energy to max out, like, Grimskin. You know what I mean? Because he's not... You're not going to use him anywhere. Like, you can... You can use him. You know, he he's just a mid mid champion. So yeah, you can make the argument, yeah, you, you know, Burita, you can use him. You just gotta put good gear on him. Like, yeah, and find the right team. It's a very niche thing, but most people don't want niche things. And that argument, oh, just put good gear on him, could be said about anything. I mean, you look at more than half of the CCs, they take a mid champion, do a hundred million damage on 
Hydra or Clan Boss, and then everybody's like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, build that champion now. Nah. Neglecting gear quality at three, equipping champions with low quality gear or not leveling up gear can drastically reduce their effectiveness, effectiveness in battle. This is also true. So by that, the chat or the AI is is saying, and I actually wonder where, where chat GPT is pulling these resources. I'll, I'll ask it at the end, but are pulling these, these answers from. So if you give a strong, like, let's say you're a newer player, right? Let's let's say you're you're a newer player here. Look, perfect. Who would you focus on six starring? Let's say you're a new player and you you have um, supreme pizza over here, but you give her crap gear, like uh, I don't know four star gear, and you give her gear that's like I don't know attack, but like not not understanding the stats, which doesn't take too much to understand, but it might be a little bit at the beginning. Right, because you have to know what champion you're going to be working with, as well as the champ, the champ's stat requirements for them to be effective. And this is something that you just got to practice and keep doing over and over again. So, what I would suggest is if you're going to watch a champion guide, like I have a bunch of champion guides. If you watch any of those, I give suggestions and I, I talk about the stat requirements to prioritize if you want that champion to do well. But you do have to pay attention, in the sense that it's good for you to learn. Right, so don't just take what I'm saying and then copy it because you're not actually learning. You're not learning the game. It's important that you learn how to play the game. But I digress. If you put bad gear, crap gear, shit gear on a strong champion, they're gonna perform based on the gear that they have, because gear stats make or break a champion in raid, which directly perfects, uh, um, uh, affects your performance. So make sure that if you're you know, before you say a champion is bad, put good gear minimum on them and then level it up, level them up. And then you probably are going to see their effectiveness change. And there's other things too, right? Like masteries, ascension, making sure that you're, you're fully maxed out in terms of your ascension stars. Not, I don't mean blessings, but yeah. Number four, not joining an active clan mission. I did not expect this one. I didn't expect this one, but this is true. And here, here's, well, let's finish with reading what it says. Missing out on clan benefits like clan boss rewards and CVC events. Uh, yes and no. CVC is for whales. So if you're a casual player, then maybe not worry about that. Events can slow your progress and resource ac uh, accumulation. Like CVC does provide quote unquote free rewards. It is a quote unquote free to play haven. But if you. Well, that's not entirely true because there's the non-PR CVCs, right? Because there's CVC where it's personal rewards and you win and you get a bunch of like energy and gear and, you know, whatever bullshit. But then every other week, supposedly every other week, unless they change it like they just did here, you do a non-PR CVC, which is a non-personal reward CVC. And all you have to do is reach those milestones, assuming that your clan can get together and reach certain milestones. You'll be getting the base quote unquote, free to play, um, what do you call it? Rewards, resources. But clan boss is another big thing, right? From the clan boss, you get your daily reward, your daily rewards, which is going to be something like, let's see, from the normal chest, you get you know, gear, some silver, gear, silver, the hard chest, we get gear, potions, of course, gear, potions and brews moving up to brutal we're starting to get the same things but sometimes you get gems and shards sometimes nightmare more important you're starting to get look at this a beautiful ancient shard and you're getting five star gear and you get lego tomes which are resources that are very expensive very expensive if you're going to try to buy them yourself ultra nightmare is kind of the the best or not kind of it is the best this is the this is where you want to be eventually and you want to one key get the 70.28 mil so that you can start getting the higher drop rates for sacreds by the way can we talk about that i remember back in 2019 2020 sacred shards and lego tomes were dropping left and right and today in 2024 i swear they have nerfed i'm pretty sure they have nerfed 
the drop rates for these better rewards. Sacred Shards and Lego Tomes don't drop as often as they used to. I don't know what it is. It could just be, like, my mind trying to convince myself that I'm correct. But, but nah, something feels off. Like, I remember I was getting Sacred Shards day after day. And Lego Tomes day after day. And now I barely get them. It's, it's so weird. But yeah, basically, uh, you're going to want to be able to bang out your clan boss team get it to a one key so you can just hit that quick battle saving yourself some time and not being in a clan that doesn't or sorry if you're in a clan that doesn't take down the clan boss all the time you're missing out on those double rewards you saw when i was showing you guys you're getting two chests if you don't bring down bring down the clan boss to zero you're not getting two chests you're missing out so make sure you're not Sticking in a clan because, oh, it was my first clan or sticking in a clan because, oh, I want to help the clan. And, you know, I feel like, no, don't do don't do that. You're you're you are stunting the overall progression and growth of your um, account. Join a clan that fits where you're at, who who's like showing the same amount of um, not addiction. What's the word drive that you are for your own personal account? So, you know, you don't want to miss out on these things. This is a very good one right here. Number four gets a little pin. You get a pin, ChatGPT. Mismanaging energy, not using your energy efficiently or letting it cap can waste potential progress and resource farming. This is true. This is a little bit more commonly known. I think uh, Boozer talked about it, like the quote unquote free to play god who's never spent a single dime at all. And. Um, he talked about it. He broke it down. You can check, look for his video. He brought, he got the numbers out and whatnot. But yeah, if you, so the cap for raid is 130. Once you reach, I don't know, level 60, I think it is. You get to 130 and then it gets full. This right here is technically not the best use of your energy, but big, but it depends on what kind of player you are right now. I'm a casual player. I play, you know, whenever I want. I don't I don't honestly like log in every day anymore. Uh, and I'm not really active right now. But I will be in the future. So the only time I really bang out energy is during CVC. I just throw my energy into like spider or or the dungeons or whatever. But other than that, I'm not over here on my phone or on the PC 24/7 using the energy every single time it refills just to be, you know, not to just micromanage micro um, my, what's the word micro macro to fu fully utilize every single drip of energy that i get that's just not me but i do remember i used to to do that i would wake up in the middle of the night i would be in um i'd be driving and i'd be like oh i have 40 energy let me go ahead and, and hit the spider real quick just to make sure i'm using my energy at, at the best or like oh before i go to sleep i'm gonna use up all my energy every little less little less drop so i wake up and i have energy so if you want to do that, you can do that because it's true. If you cap it out, you're not going to be generating more energy and you're going to be missing out. Skipping daily and weekly quests, these quests provide valuable rewards that can aid in progression and missing them can slow your growth. True, but you also don't have to do it, right? I'm missing some days. Like I've got four hours left. I haven't even done my dailies, which by the way, the dailies don't take too long, right? Because you can bang this out in like what, five five minutes the weeklies you're going to want to do because you get all these rewards as well as an ancient shard some xp for your account this all accumulates into the monthly rewards for the sacred shard that you get once a month you can get your advanced quests also it's another way to make sure you're you're getting your energy but again i'm not a you know i'm, I'm not gonna bother doing too much of it anymore just because it's just not something that i, I want to do but yeah, skipping daily and weekly quests. If that's something that you want to do, go ahead and do it. It's a game. Play at your own leisure. Leisure. Ignoring arena battles. Neglecting the arena can result in missing out on valuable resources and arena-specific rewards, which are crucial for growth. This is true. If you care about doing arena. So your daily quests are naturally going to have you do classic arena battles. And at the end of those classic arena battles, you're going to one rank up in classic arena and two you're also going to get uh magisteel and something else i think oh uh tokens let me show you guys 
All right, so let's just do a quick one real quick. All right, so you you do your arena battles. You do five of these a day, but it's also important that you try to do as many battles as you can if you're trying to progress your account, right? And I'll show you right here in a bit as soon as, uh, you know, this took a lot longer than I was expecting. That's not a good thing. Leo, don't do it to me. Come on, move faster, Arbiter. Move faster. Uh-oh, Leo's about to take a turn. He's going to do it. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come in. Come in. Dude, this is taking forever. Yeah, this is not the best example. All right, so basically here, you get your your gold medals and you get your Magisteel. Magisteel is used to craft artifacts in the forge. And here you can get your resilience and your perception gear. That's also really good for general progression. And then you can come here to the Great Hall and you have affinity bonuses. It's going to take a long time to get you to level 240, right? It took me like, what, two years playing casually? But you get these arena bonuses. So you get your tier bonus right here, plus 22. If you're at plat, it's like up to 25, but nobody really stays in plat. You get your uh, HP attack percentage and defense bonuses. And then you get your... You know, depending on what bonus you get, you get any of these. So, like, accuracy for all of your magic champions, you can get a plus 80 off the rip. Arena bonuses for live arena. I don't really do live arena, but you can get bonuses here, uh, depending. And you can see that reflected if you look at your total stats here. You can see, okay, your your uh, your Kandrafon has classic arena bonus right here. 3,800 uh, HP, an extra 332 attack, and 100, uh, 199 defense. Where's another example? Um, oh, I, here, arena bonus. Oh, so that's just the tier bonus, but the affinity bonuses also come from the where I just showed you, the Great Hall, and you get all these bonuses right here. Imagine that, an extra 80 accuracy that you don't have to worry about finding it from the gear. So it's important that you're you're doing that. And let's see. Oh, we're here at number eight. Not farming masteries. Masteries can significantly boost your champion's performance and neglecting them can make your champion weaker in combat. This is also another thing that we kind of touched on, so I'm not going to, you know, park in on it so much. But yeah, masteries are a huge thing. Masteries can make it so that your champion can smack even harder than, than you need to be. Or if you have a champion that... Oh, he doesn't have masteries. Or if you have a champion that is lacking in accuracy, you can, you know, get this eagle eye for an extra 50 points of accuracy so off the rip you already have 130 something like that never mind I, I'm, I'm 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 the i'm the wrong asian for math but you guys get the point get your masteries for your champions now there are people who advocate heavily for being most efficient with your resources so what I do is I just use gems and I don't care because I'm not going to, you know, spend the, the time to farm stage 15. But the best thing to do is just to farm stage 15. It's the most efficient way to max out your champions if you can get a good amount of uh, a good team together. I just like if I if I need masteries for a champion, I just go here and uh, or Emic doesn't have one. And I say, OK, I'm just going to use the. 800 gems and that that's what i do you don't have to do that but I, you know i'm not gonna sit there and farm minnow but you should if you're trying to be most efficient using auto battles incorrectly relying too much on auto battles without properly setting it up could lead your team to unnecessary losses and wasted resources i'm not too sure about that because i personally never really uh worry about this but then again maybe i'm just it's an oversight since i don't really think about it but you guys let me know what you think. Do you guys use auto battles incorrectly? Poor team compositions at number 10. Building a team without synergy or without considering the strengths and weaknesses of each champion can lead to failed dungeons and campaigns and other content. Also true. But this also kind of encompasses the entire... 
um, crux of what Raid is. You need to have good team composition and synergy. And if you don't have that, then you're going to be missing out. Or not really like miss, missing out, but you're not going to be performing as best as you possibly could. So make sure that you're like, there's a, this is like its own video in and of itself. So I don't want to dive too deeply into it. And my cat's just distracted me because the boy cat likes to just pounce on the girl cat. She's just chilling here and he's just like, oh, I'm going to gonna mess with her. Granted, he is a year younger. But yeah, if you like, for example, go into an arena fight and you have no idea what your champions do when you just pick some random champions, more often than not, you're you're just, you know, not going to perform well. I'll give you a, a case of point and example here. A team with no synergy, I just kind of picked random champions. It's not going to do well. And you can see that reflected here. It's not doing well. I got outsped. And um, you know what I mean? So it's important that you guys are paying attention to your teams. Learn each champion. Learn their skills, how they work, how they work in conjunction with other champions. And that's going to net you the best result in terms of uh, doing arena. The same can be said for your dungeons and your clan boss team. The dungeons and clan boss team also require you to have a, a good understanding of what your bosses that you're going up against can and can't do right so don't just throw in a bunch of champions although when you start out you're just gonna have a bunch of champions that you're gonna use for everybody but later on you're gonna niche down in terms of the champions that you're going to be using so all of the oh wait i was gonna ask chat gpt where did you get this information i just want to see this information is based on general gameplay strategies and common mistakes identified by experienced players and content creators in Raid. These points are widely discussed and read, uh, recommended across various forums, guides, and videos seasoned, uh, from seasoned players who share their experiences and advice. If you need specific sources or a more detailed analysis, I can look up blah, blah, blah. No. So thank you, ChatGPT. Biggest mistakes made here off of Reddit. I know, and again, I want you guys to comment your, not just so you guys comment and boost the video or whatever, like I'm genuinely curious to uh, to see what mistakes you guys were making and if it's the same as mine. Like, did you feed a freaking Masha Led and Sethalia to make Sepulchre Sentinel a, a six star? I've done it. When they were still crap champions, before they got buffed, I did it. I fed, I fed Legos. I shouldn't have. But I didn't know that going going forward. I didn't know five years we were going to have, you know, faction guardians or that they were going to be good champions or empowerment for champions. You know what I mean? Or did you sell gear that you weren't supposed to sell? Or did you level up flat stat gear all the way to 16? Let me know. I know this is not a new topic, but we're always learning something new. And half the time it ends with us kicking ourselves. What am I after? Or what I what I am after is a bit more nuanced than prioritize clan boss or do dungeons, then you can double dip with an event. For me, the big dummy move was not farming lethal from Dark Fae earlier. Yes, farm Dark Fae, one of the best sets in the entire game. I have let that rotation pass by a few times without maximizing my silver keys, and I really regret it now. What, he do, what does he mean by maximizing silver keys? So, oh, hold on, let me... Let me let me, let me do this real quick because uh, it didn't sit well with me here. Just bang it out real quick. Come on, faster than that, man. Mithral is actually pretty tanky. She's usually one of the last champions that I that I go up against who's still alive. And I think it's the strengthen and the shield, but yeah. Sorry, I had to not let him get away with that. All right, so when you go to Doom Tower, what does he mean by maximizing your silver keys? In the Dark Fae, this is what I do. I use up all 15 keys to get to the Dark Fae. Or I use up all my keys, and I finally get to, to stage 120, right? The Dark Fae, imagine 120 will drop the most amount of rewards. So what do I do with that information? I wait until a day... Well, here, sorry, let me back up a little bit more. I wait until I have all of these secret rooms unlocked i don't do them i wait until i have them unlocked here too i still don't do them 
and I wait till I get around here on normal, all right? And then I go back to hard. After, sorry, I bang out all these secret rooms on hard and normal, and I accumulate a bunch of silver keys because every time you beat a, a, um, a secret room, one of the rewards that you get is a, uh, let's just do it real quick. One of the rewards that you get is going to be a silver key. And after doing this a few times, you accumulate all those silver keys. And then you can use all said silver keys in one day on the Dark Fae. And it's going to be at the, so you get two silver keys here. So now I'm up at six. And once you go to hard at 120, this is going to be the best spot to farm Dark Fae. Because it drops the most rewards here. So make sure you're doing that and don't uh and don't waste your your silver keys by doing it too early wait until the very last minute to do it not realizing lego books were only for legos wait did i i didn't finish what he was saying my thinking was i can't do this on auto and win 100 percent. that's bad because you don't actually lose anything even if it's not 100 percent. like if you if you have a dark fate team that you throw on auto and you win, I don't know, let's say 50% of the time, it's still better to keep doing it and let it run over and over again until all your keys are used to reap the rewards and then then just try to get better with time. It's just too much work, I understand that, but now I recognize you don't need 100% win rate to farm her, true. Just make a team that can beat her, put it on a multi-battles and walk away, handful of extra keys after that to do it again, true. Yeah, so if you didn't know that, now you know. Jaywalk 307, not realizing Lego books were only for Legos. I was so excited to get Apothecary. I spent six Lego books. Oh my God. On a rare? He spent six Lego books. Six Lego books. I'm not buying anything. On Apothecary. He looked at Apothecary and was like, I need to, I need to rank up <laughs> these books. Let me, let me go ahead and just use a bunch of, uh, Lego, t this is what he did. He, he used a bunch of Lego tomes. Uh, imagine using uh, mythicals. <laughs> Dear God. This one physically hurt to read. Only thing that hurts more is feeding a Lego, which I did twice. Legos are damn, Lego books are damn rare, but you'll eventually, but you'll get, but you'll get the eventually but you'll get them eventually and with each book gain the lost books will be less percentage lego champions are way rarer talking a lego taking a lego in rare skin to a literal level i was feeding epics willy-nilly even vogoth yeah but even i use epics for food nowadays but then again balls deep end gamer feel like throwing up i fed the fat man because i didn't like how his damage deflection read true I didn't like it either. Then my friend built him and I realized how good he was. Then I built him too for Fire Knight and realized how good he was. I don't know how big mistake that would have been. I'm a newish player, but I won a mythical book somewhere or they handed them out for free. I don't remember. And I was thinking of using them on a legendary because when the hell am I ever going to get a mythical? True. When are we ever going to get a mythical? Still haven't found a legendary other than the free one. In the end, I decided to keep it, but damn, it was tempting. Keep them. Don't waste them. You get leggy books like crazy from Hydra. See, see, do you get? Lego books from Hydra? I know you get Mythic Tomes from uh, Clan Clash, I think. And Doom Tower. One day you'll get one. Maybe the books will be a game changer to whatever Mythic you end up with. Best thing to do is save them. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You could be that one really lucky free-to-play player who's sitting on one Mythic Shard. You pull that, and then you get, I don't know, uh, Goku. I thought the rarity would be like a strength. So a Lego book would be like using four or five rares. I was wrong. Damn. I made that mistake too. Yeah, I could see that being a thing. I, that's understandable. It's kind of like doy, but at the same time, no, it's understandable. I restarted my account after using all my legendary books on my starter champ. Damn. That sucks, but honestly not as bad as losing out on somebody like Newt. You can get books over time, but there's no guarantee you're going to get a specific Lego. I actually winced. I did the same for in my first year of Kale, thinking legendary books made him a lot stronger than rares. <laughs> yeah, I definitely spent Lego books on my starter too. I accidentally fed one of the rares for the nut fusion. Only time I ever did that. Big sad. True. I think you just took the lead. Imagine that. Imagine missing out on nut, on newt, because he fed one of the rares. 
I think uh, Chosen did that a long time ago. Not starting the game a week earlier and missing the nut fusion. True. My biggest mistake was not even knowing about new player codes. Could have had a Wukong from day one. Also wasting plenty of higher level books. So uh, he's not the only one. We're not the only ones. Apparently, a lot of people are feeding Lego books into uh, epics and, and rare champions. So there's that. I started the night. I, I started right at the end of Rathalos, so I didn't get Wukong or any of the earlier ones. I'm going to drink some coffee right now. Hold on. Then right after I start spending money, make some progress, they re-enable the Wukong code. Yeah, that's true. Did you wake up in cold sweats having those moments? I cry every time I see someone else using him. <laughs> I didn't understand how split souls work. So, so during the Adeline Soul event, I earned the fourth and fifth split souls. Sold. Oh my god. Sold the third star split soul thinking I didn't need it if I had the higher ones. And now she's sitting at two and I can't upgrade her. <laughs> Are you me? This is something I have never found out until it was too late. Thanks for sharing and stopping a potential future mistake. True. This this guy's big mistake is taking a break. I don't think that's a mistake. Missed UDK, Monkey, and Newt. Yeah, no, never mind. That was a mistake. Not having a nuker with a speed aura sucks. I got UDK. Man, I'd take a permanent break after missing that. Yeah. Fused worgen for mikage and then somehow fed him this is me right here except without the fusing part i have summoned quite a few where again and um i i just can't summon him again like i fed him i summoned the werewolf i fed him multiple times and now for the life of me after hundreds and hundreds of void shards i can't pull him it's so weird it's like Polarium knows, hey, this is a highly coveted champion. We're going to make sure that we drop the uh, summon rates for this one. Started playing. Hey, started playing was the biggest mistake. That is the only correct answer. All mistakes were due to this horrible first one. I started on mobile, played for four months knowing there was a PC, and spending 3k on a mobile game. 3k, holy Jesus, that's nothing. That's nothing. I mean, that's not nothing. That's something, but still. 3k you got out cheap bro you got out cheap you got out before you got in deep 3k is expensive it's an expensive mistake but it's also a relatively cheap mistake in the grand scheme of things speaking as somebody who spent way much more than that i'm not proud of it i wish i could take it back but i was addicted i have multiple accounts that i've spent money on I, I I don't know. Like I'm I'm just I'm just an addict. I'm just an addict. But not anymore. I haven't spent since July, I think. Wait a minute. What month is this? It's July now. I meant I meant uh I haven't spent since the Nergigante Archer thing. I think one one I you guys could check that video, but I basically was going it was I can't even say I was going toe to toe. Like I was going hard in the paint trying to win Nergigante with the champ training event for four, four and a half days, something like that, I was on raid and I was spending money left and right to win, ultimately to get crackened the fuck out by somebody who didn't even have the decency to put their name up. They just put random numbers. But yeah, since then, I took that huge L. I tried to maintain a positive attitude, but I was like, nah, I'm not spending anymore. I'm not even buying a fucking gem pack anymore. I have not spent any money. I'm not going to spend any money. Spending gems on the 11 pack ancients and taking crap champions to 60. Yeah. I don't know. Is that really like a bad thing? Using, was it 900 gems uh, for 11 ancients? Yeah, you know what? Now that I'm saying it out loud, that's kind of a bad deal. But it's not a bad deal if you're like right there from a guaranteed champion or if you think that you're close to mercy and the 2x is about to end. That might, you know. Because I still do this myself every now and then. But then again, yeah, you guys know. I'm in that boat. Ancients were my fix to try to get new champs, and those packs packs were a way to go. Seems silly. I won't ever use gems for ancients unless I'm pushing the last bit of event. You know, actually, hold up. If you're a new account and you're trying to build your roster, I don't think, because you're trying to build your roster, that it's an entire waste to use gems for ancient, ancient packs um, to get 11 especially during a 2x or if you're doing an event. So yeah, that that's one one way that I could justify doing this. 
Uh, what what should gems be spent on? Energy refills. Yeah, energy. Uh, not getting our mons. Forgetting to fuse our mons within the time limit. Feeding more to macabre early on. Wow. You fed Ghostborn. Big mistake. Skipping our mons. Skipping Newt and our mons. Prioritizing arena over clan boss. Not putting in a one-man defense in arena. Yeah. One-man defenses in arena allow you to get easier fights. To, you know, just make it easier for you to farm arena tokens. Using all my early Lego books on Warpriest and Kale. Didn't do Ancora. Didn't get Naris. Didn't spend to get Nar uh, Narcis. That's fine. I'm doing fine. More than fine without Ancora and Narcis. First started, I had no uh, no concept on what made a champion good. So I based most of that. When I first started, I had no concept on what made a champion good. So I based most of my decisions on how cool I thought they looked. So when Newt came out, I skipped him because he didn't look cool. Cherry on top was I won his Fire Knight skin in the tournament. Wasn't even trying to win. Still mad at myself. An eternal reminder that you will never have him. And somebody was just like, oh, I pulled him today. Dear God. Skip Narcis. Endgame PvP who loves Ancora. Bad decision on my end. Restarting my seven my semi-new account to get Sun Wukong. Unbinded a dupe ya Carl. You do what for tokens? Dear God. Not committing to live arena. It's totally fine, dude. Did the uh Loriaka fusion, the cow fusion as my first fusion. Had to miss nut fusion as a result. Pulled Taurus during the Loriaka fusion. Now I got a Krizia. I guess it kind of worked out. Yeah. Downloading the app. 